I know when you say that 1% of this um, eyewitness reports, uh, they're uh, un uh, interdimensional. That may not sound so much, but then you mentioned, you give the data that there are about 20 million or so sightings. 1% from 20 million is a lot. That's and a lot, you, right? It, yes. So, uh, I mean, uh, if someone is honest in their work, they want to be intellectually honest and they want to assess every um, every case and go little by little. That's a lot of cases and a lot. It will require a lot of time to uh, just go through each of these and try to give the best answer you can. Um, so in this one percent, you give us the data. They there are. Uh, uh, close encounters of four different kinds. Can you please explain to someone who doesn't know what are these uh, close encounters of the, you know, sure. the four That's different the, kinds? Well, back in the 1960s, the U.S. government uh, uh, commissioned a team of physicists to study the UFO phenomena, headed up by Alan Hynek. And uh, he was the one that came up with the term close encounters. And a close encounter of the first kind is where the individual comes within 500 feet. And we're talking about the ones that are truly unidentifiable. So it's physically close, less than 500 feet. Then he came up with the close encounters of the second kind. Uh, and, you know, that's where there's some physical effects that are experienced, uh, where they might see a crater caused by the UFO crashing into the earth or one of their animals gets injured or they themselves get hurt. And a close encounter of the third kind is where there's actual communication going on. Typically, the human contactee goes into a trance. And while they're in a trance, uh, they might engage in automatic writing. So they wind up writing a treatise that they claim came from this uh, UFO being. And uh, now they've come up with close encounters of the fourth kind. And this is where someone actually gets killed uh, by the encounter. So, and today there are over 2,000 documented cases uh, where the UFO is proven to be real, uh, but not physical. And the best evidence I've seen is where you've got multiple observers that see the UFO going through the atmosphere. And we've got multiple observers at different locations you can actually determine the velocity with which the UFO is going through the atmosphere. And uh, it's up to more than, you know, 15,000 miles per hour, or typically, you know, three to 5,000 miles per hour. But what's interesting is that all the observers report, they never hear a sonic boom. They don't see heat friction. I mean, I've observed the, uh, you know, the space shuttle going through the atmosphere. And when it comes through the atmosphere, you hear two loud sonic booms and you see this streak of heat friction behind the space shuttle. Uh, with these UFOs, we don't see that. If it's a physical object, you will get heat friction. You will get a sonic boom. On the other hand, we know it's real because uh, there are cases where it's observed to go through the atmosphere and then it crashes into the earth. You go to the crash site, you see a shallow crater. Something caused that crater. Uh, and if there's snow, the snow is melted. The vegetation is damaged. But as you investigate the crater site, there's no debris, there's no artifacts. We know when an aircraft crashes into the earth, there's always artifacts and debris. In the case of these UFOs, there's nothing you can put on display in a museum. And I know that, uh, you know, David Grush testified before Congress that our U.S. government does, in fact, have physical artifacts. But he claims this goes back to the 1930s. And it's like, there's no way our government could cover up something uh, of that nature for that long of a period of time uh, without some artifact being revealed. I mean, I've personally been to museums where I've seen lunar rocks. Uh, you know, I've seen people handling the rocks. There's research papers published on lunar rocks. There's nothing in the peer-reviewed literature on artifacts of UFOs. It's missing. Uh, but this is why people like Jacques Vallée say we're dealing with something that's real but interdimensional. It doesn't leave any physical effects.